Okay, so I was looking through the forums to see if there'd been any updates on any operating systems on Raspberry Pi 4, and uh, I found uh, a link on Raspberry Pi forums uh, from Sakaki, and uh, he's written that there's a, a new update on Gen 2 Linux. And this is an operating system I haven't really covered before, uh, even though it does feature in my Minecraft video because uh, there was some instructions on how to install uh, Minecraft Java on an operating system and turns out they use Gen 2 Linux um, and it's a great operating system. Not the sort of system you would ordinarily use if you're not that into programming and setting up and, and, uh, and basically changing lots of things with Linux but because Sakaki has done so much work on this uh, he's made it incredibly accessible so it's very very easy to install and also to do this update it does take some time though so to to install it what you need to do is go to the link that I'll put in the description uh, for the 1.5.3 update uh, and you'll go to the page you'll click on the download link uh, once it's downloaded you use Belena Etcher to write the image uh, which is very simple. Once that's done, just pop it in your Pi and boot it up. The one thing I would do is to enable overclocking because it will make the process a lot quicker. I didn't do that and the update from 1.5.3, and I don't know if it's to 1.5.4, but apparently it's quite a major update. Uh, and it took, on my system, it took about five hours plus uh, to do the update. Uh, and it all worked, it all seemed to work fine. Um, but the thing to do first would be to click on Pi 4 Tuning. And uh, in this case, because I'm using uh, Pi Moroni Fan Shim, I'm, I would go for the extreme overclocking, which I've got switched on now. The Pi Fan isn't spinning at the moment because there's also this really useful bit here where you just tick Pi Moroni Fan Shim and uh, you can have it that it, the fan comes on and off uh, with the different temperatures and you can even adjust the temperature and it tells you how to do oh, it's amazing like so simple really really well set up so that's that's on so this latest update in, includes the Mesa 20 graphics driver so this could make a quite a big improvement on some games and various things so to install the update what you need to do is go into terminal you can see there and you need to type in sudo genup. I'm not going to click on it because uh, I've already done it, uh, but I'll show you what happens. Okay, so let's have a look at the operating system and how it is. I like the fact that there's a dock down here that stays on all the time. Uh, I quite like the fact that it's got uh, a minimum, minimize all windows. So if I was to start clicking on things. Okay, so you can see I've got some tabs up and running now. If I click on this one, that minimizes them all and then pulls them all back, which is quite nice if you want to get to something on the desktop. You can see it's quite nice and snappy. Uh, so let's close this down, close down terminal. Uh, so we've got Mozilla Firefox as a web browser, but also we have uh, under internet, we've got Chromium as well. So let's have a look at what comes in the applications as standard. So you can see these, these are set uh, so we've got Terminal, File Manager, Mail Reader and Web Browser. Let's have a quick look at the File Manager, although I think there's two on here. So Browse Network. One of my tests is to see if it sees my NAS drive straight off, which I don't think it has. But this is not to say that it can't be used with my NAS drive, it's just I like to see if an operating system can see it without any, any extra intervention. And usually I just go go and browse network and it shows up. So that's not there, but let's not worry about that. Let's click. So we've got settings, loads of options on settings. I've messed about with appearance a little bit and applied this uh, dusk, which is a sort of grayer thing. If I go back up to the top, advanced network configuration, appearance, Bluetooth adapters. There's so much settings in here, so many controls. Mouse and touchpad. Uh, and there is also in here, this is this uh, Raspberry Pi config tool which is what happens on first boot. And as I mentioned at the start, you've got the, the tuning on there. But there's all sorts of extra things on here. Mine defaulted to uh, 4K, and I can't screen capture at 4K. So I've uh, put in config.txt, I've put in to, to basically force it to go 1080 so I can screen capture it. And also, 4K doesn't tend to work as well on an operating system on a Pi, so I didn't want to use that anyway. But yeah, loads of different options in here.
interfaces, Wi-Fi, and the, and the very important overclocking bit. So under Accessories, Application Finder, which is on that dock, Mouse Pad, Notes App, Passwords and Keys, Screenshot, uh, Development, all sorts of things in there, Education, Graphics, Internet, there you can see Chromium's in there, and a few other things, Multimedia, VLC, MPV Media Player, loads of Office stuff in there, look. all sorts of things, Photo XX, and System, I think that's a Partition Manager, I might look at that because I've been trying to get Windows um, to run off the same SD card. So, yeah, that might be a way of doing it. Oh, well, there's an about there. Is that going to tell me what version? Version 4.15. So let's see how this, this application finder works. Chromium. Yeah, Chromium comes up there. Yeah, I don't know if this is uh, just what's installed. It looks like it probably is, doesn't it? Yeah, if I go to... If I delete that and just click on graphics... Yeah. So that's showing me everything that's installed. I haven't seen a way of adding and installing things. Removable drives and media. I still will need to do something with um, CD ripping at some point. Yeah, I still can't see uh, a way of installing apps, but I suppose you could, you, obviously you can use terminal to do that. So maybe I need to look into that. But let's do a little bit of a test on the web browser. So this is the Firefox one that it defaults to. Uh, let's just do a bit of uh, Hot UK Deals. And click on that. Let's get another tab. BBC. And let's see how well it moves around. Yeah, not bad. There's two, two fingers on the trackpad to scroll. That seems to cope with that. I've just heard my fan come on. So my fan's been off all this time, uh, even though it's overclocked to 2 gig. And then click on BBC Home. And then go back to Hot Geek. Yeah, that feels, that feels reasonably snappy. And this is all running from an SD card, not running from an SSD or anything like that. So let's do a quick YouTube test. Haven't changed any settings. Whoop. And let's find something with a bit of movement. Let's go with this. Grammarly does more than catch errors. With Grammarly, you, you can find really good, no, perfect words that make your writing sharp. Yeah, it's just a bit skippy already on there. And my uh, my fan just came on again. It had gone off before. Let's get the ads. Just pause that. Let's go for... 1080, full screen, and hit play. And as ever, not great. I thought that maybe because the drivers um, had been at the newer drivers had been updated, that maybe something might have changed on that. Uh, but that the YouTube test uh, isn't isn't quite there. Okay, so this was the forum thread uh, that I'd found that mentioned how new it was. So Saturday 15th of Feb, uh, yes of last week, new update is available. So uh, yeah, this is very recent and uh, I saw here about how long it takes. It took it took me yeah about five or six hours to install, but I think it's worth the wait. There's an awful lot on there. And uh, looking back through the forums at all the comments and everything, uh, Sakaki's definitely been updating it and applying things. So uh, it's a project to watch. 
Okay, so I hope you like this. Thanks very much for watching. Please like and subscribe.